All right, welcome back everyone and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to get ready to go over the photo video and user and camera interface for the Pixel 3a XL. So this is my full camera review for the Pixel 3a XL where we're going to go over everything I feel is important for you to know. Now, before we dive into talking about the main camera interface and its features, I want to take the time to go over the ways that you can launch into the cameras on your Pixel 3a XL. Now, in particular with your 3a XL, the, there are two ways that you can launch into the cameras on your device. Way number one is just by simply pressing on the camera icon no matter what screen it's on, on your device, that would take you into the main camera interface page. And way number two is by double pressing the power button from any screen, whether your display is off or not, you would drop you straight into the main camera interface simply with a double press of the power button. Now, let me show y'all how to access that feature, whether you wanna turn it off or on, let me show you how to get to that. So to get to where we can configure the double press of the power button gesture, we wanna double swipe down on the notification shade. So one, two, and then in the bottom corner here, you're gonna see a gear icon, tap on that, okay? Then we're gonna scroll down to where it says system, and you can see from the sub settings uh, list beneath the system menu, it says gestures. So we know from that, if we go into system, we'll find the settings that says gesture. So we wanna tap on that. Then you can see we wanna tap on gestures here. Whoop, wrong one. Tap on gestures. And then you can see we have a full list of gestures that the Pixel 3a XL supports. And then right here, we just wanna tap on quickly launch into the camera or quickly open the camera. And then this is where we could turn off or turn on the double tap of the power button to launch us into the cameras. And you see it gives you a real nice breakdown of what the feature does, along with a really nice demonstration. So really good stuff there, really good stuff indeed. So if you want it turned off, you just tap the toggle to turn it off. If you want to turn it on, if it's turned off, you tap the toggle to turn it on, all right? So that goes over the two ways that you can launch into the cameras on your Pixel 3a XL. Now let's go ahead and jump into the main camera interface and talk about more stuff in more detail. So here we are on the main camera interface. Now let's quickly go through the modes that the Pixel 3a XL supports. So let me swipe all the way to the left. Now we do have a variety of modes on the Pixel 3a XL, we have night mode, which pretty much as the name implies, night mode, night sight, however you wanna say that, pretty much as the name implies, if you're in a darker scene, it may suggest you turn on night mode so it can bring out more colors and boost up the detail, thus giving you, a, thus giving you an overall brighter image. All right, so that's how night mode works or night sight works. Then we have portrait mode, which gives you that nice blurred out background here. And one of the sweet things about pixel cameras is you get two photos. So let me show you, you get your portrait mode photo with the nice blurred out background and you get your regular photo with no blur to it, okay? So you get two photos just from one mode. It's really, really nice. So you see you get that nice blurred out background effect, really good stuff there really good stuff indeed. So that's how portrait mode works. And that works with the front and the rear facing cameras. So really good stuff there. Then we have our primary photo camera interface here, basic shutter button, nice viewfinder. You can get to your settings by tapping on the down arrow here. And this is where you can see your photo camera settings. So we have flash controls, we have on off auto, we have HDR plus controls, we have motion controls, which I've turned off, and then we have a timer, and this timer is just for photos, there's no timer in video, and then we have our ratios. So we got the 16 by nine wide angle crop ratio, or we got the four by three ratio here. 
Now all of my photos and my videos were done in the full 4x3 ratio with stabilization turned on, just so you know. All right, and then if we tap on this gear icon here, that's gonna take us into the sub settings where we can do a little bit more granular changes if we would like. We're gonna save that towards the end. All right, but that's how you get into your settings and that's how you quickly change stuff for photos. Then just below that, we got a quick shortcut to uh, punch us in and punch us out with a little bit of zoom. So you can see right now there's no zoom and it's on one times. But if I tap the two times icon, it's going to zoom us in. Really good stuff there. And that's a really nice overall feature in my opinion. Okay. So let's go back out. Boom. Then we got our shutter button, which turns into a video button, depending on the mode that we're in, in the center. We got a quick shortcut to take us to our front facing camera off to the left. So tap that. It brings us to the front facing camera. Tap it again. Takes us back to the rear facing camera. That's off to the left. And then off to the right, we have a quick shortcut to our gallery application. All right. And one thing that I want to point out, because I may forget to do it, but if you're ever not sure what your resolution is or how many megapixels your camera is, you just need to go into your gallery and find a specific photo or video and then at least for pixel devices you would just have to swipe up then you get all that necessary information so you can see for this particular photo it was taken with the front facing 8 megapixel camera okay and you can see it has the pixel designation on the end of the file okay you can see it's a JPG portrait file all right, and it lets you know what device took it and what uh, focal lens it was using along with the ISO that it used. All right, so if you're ever not sure what your uh, um, uh, file camera megapixels are or your, uh, your device's camera megapixels are, you just have to pull up a photo, okay? And the same thing can be said for video. So if we go over to a video here, Okay, let me find a video real quick. All right, so here's a video. If we go over to the video and we swipe up, you can see this will tell us the resolution that the video was shot in. So this is a 4K video. The megapixel that it was shot in, so it had to crop down the 12 megapixel sensor to 8.3, and it would tell us the overall uh, size of the video. So this was a big video, 4 gigabytes. All right? So, just so you know there, and then the same thing for the front. So if we find a front facing video here, and we swipe up, and you can see it was taken with the front facing eight megapixel sensor. Okay. Oh, actually this was with the rear camera again, but it would say the same thing, because this is when I was doing the rear camera testing in 4K. But if you did a video with the front facing camera, it would say the same thing. You would swipe up, you will see the megapixel size, the resolution, and the overall file size just by swiping up on your photo or video from your gallery on your pixel. Okay? So I just wanted to point that out. Now, continuing on here, if we swipe over, we'll get into our video modes. Now, if we tap that down arrow, you can see we do have flash controls for video and with the pixel we can record in 4k at 30 fps at least with the stock camera or 1080p at 30 or 60 fps now if you download a third-party camera app from the play store or you sideload a third-party camera app via apk you may or may not get more camera controls so i would actually recommend two I can, you can either get the 4K Camera Pro application, or I can also recommend the Open Camera application. Now, the 4K Camera Pro application is a paid application. Just want to make sure I point that out. Whereas the Open Camera application is free. But either one of those apps will unlock more controls for your cameras. But particularly when we talk about this video, we're just talking about the stock camera app and the stock... Uh, 
performance coming out of the photos and videos from that stock camera application. But I did want to go ahead and point that out. So we do have 1080p 60 and 1080p 30 or 4K at 30 FPS. Now also, let me grab a microphone real quick. I don't know where I put it. Yes, here it is. Also, we do have a uh, plug and play microphone support here. So if I plug in a microphone into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, boom, it's gonna detect it and then you can see swipe down for external microphone controls, all right? And now if we go down here, we can use the external microphone or we can use the mics on the device. So if I switch it over to here, now we're using the mics on the device. And if I switch it over here, we're using the external microphone. So really, really nice to see that they have plug and play external microphone support. So if you're ever in an area where you think the audio is not gonna be the best, and you bring your external microphone along, you should be good to go. Not only does this work with the 3.5 millimeter head, headphone jack on the Pixel 3a XL, but if you have a Pixel without a headphone jack, it will also work with your 3.5, your 3.5, with your USB Type C charging port. So if you want to get a USB Type C microphone, or you have a USB Type C to 3.5 millimeter adapter, that will work plug and play style with your Pixel as well. So I just wanted to point that out also. All right, and then the minute you unplug it, but if we unplug it here, it goes away. So now there's no longer external microphone support in the sub menu settings here. So I just wanted to go over that as well. Okay, and then I might as well show you real quickly with the front facing camera if we fire up a quick video here. Okay, if we fire up that video now, okay, and we swipe, you can see it is 1080p uh, 30 FPS, and it had to crop down to two megapixels, and you can see the file size. Now it's only cropping down to two megapixels because I have the video stabilization turned on and the specific aspect ratio that I'm using, okay? Just wanted to point that out. Just wanted to make sure that y'all see that there. Okay. So that goes over the video modes for the front and the rear. Now the front maxes out at 1080p, 30 FPS. Okay. And the rear can go all the way up to 4K, 30 FPS. And if we swipe over, these are the additional modes that we have. So we have panorama. We have photo spare. We have playground. And then we have Google Lens. All right. And if we go back over here and we go into the primary cameras, we have slow motion video and time lapse along with normal video. So for a slow motion video, we can do 1080p at 120 frames per second. That's what this designates. That's why you see the um, one fourth time zoom. That's 1080p or one fourth speed. That's 1080p at 120 frames per second. But if I tap to 1 8th speed, that's 240 frames per second at 720p. And you can see the resolution switch live. So you see how much more darker the image got, and you see how much more greenier the image got. That's how you can tell this is 720p. Notice that when I switch over to um, 1 4th, it gets much better. That's how you can notice that this is 1080p gets much better, the image gets brighter, just so you know, all right? So now I believe we've officially went over all of the uh, main line settings in the camera interface. Now let's get into some more granular controls by hitting the gear icon from the drop down. And in here, you can see we got our lo location metadata controls. I always recommend that you toggle that off. This way your location metadata is not in your photos or videos. That's a security thing. That's why I recommend that. Then we got our camera shutter sound. You toggle that off and on as you would like. 
our Google Lens suggestion, our quick social media sharing. So you set that up, you can quickly have quick share shortcuts after you take a photo or a video to share on your favorite social media sites. Then we have our gesture controls. So this is also where you can program what your volume rockers do, depending on the mode that you're in. So depending on the mode that you're in, you can use the volume rockers to take a photo and or start and stop a video, or you can use the volume rockers to zoom in and out. And I actually find the zoom functionality to be a lot better when you use the volume rockers as opposed to pinch to zoom. You can also use it to control the overall volume of your video, or you could turn it off so it doesn't do anything. Along with that, we also have a double tap gesture to quickly switch you between the front and the rear facing cameras or quickly zoom you in to a set point, okay? Now, I actually think that's pretty cool to use for switching between the front and rear facing cameras, so that's how I have that set, okay? But that's where you would go to change that or set that up exactly how you would like it. Then just below that, we got our device storage and what we can do with it. So you see when you pull up the device storage, you can see how much space you have left on your device and you will get an approximation of how many photos you can take or how long a video you can take straight from here. Also, this is where you can turn on your smart storage saver. So when you hit a certain amount of space left, it will offload your photos and videos to Google Photos, okay? Now, I don't like to do that because I like to work with all my uh, photos and videos directly on device. So you can see I've turned that off. Typically what I do is I play around with stuff and anything that I don't like, I turn it off. And I would recommend you do the same thing. And you can also do some more stuff here as well, okay? So that's the device storage. I really do like the overall breakdown that Google decided to go with. And I like how they defined everything real nice and neatly. Good stuff there. Good stuff indeed. All right. So if we keep going here, if you click on advanced, now you can see we got a few more options here. So we got a dirty lens notification. We could turn off and on the HDR plus controls or we could turn off and on the GIF or JPEG controls and the raw plus controls. All right, so you could turn that off and on just by toggling here. And then if you wanna to get to where those photos will be stored, you can quickly jump to that storage location by clicking the view raw folder. That's where all your JPEG and raw plus photos will be stored. And then you can also change your compression of your videos to the new H.265 format from this setting here. Now, I wouldn't recommend it because unless the unless you're watching it back on the supported device, you will lose the audio for it, but it is there if you want to compress your videos to take up less space. All right, so that's that. Let's get out of that. Then just below that, we have our frame hints. Then we have our grid lines to help us line up the shot. And then just below that, we can compress our photos so they take up less space as well. So you can do full resolution to have the maximum file size for your photos, or you can do me medium resolution so it takes up less space. And then here is the video stabilization. Now, with it turned on, it's gonna crop in the, it's gonna crop in the video to cut down on the shake, okay? With it turned off, it's, you're gonna have a more shaky video, but you'll have a wider field of view. So you turn that off and on as you see fit. Now, as I said earlier, all my photos and videos were taken with stabilization turned on. So if you notice a kind of weird crop, that's because of the stabilization, all right? But you mess around with that as you see fit. I like to have stable video because your boy got shaky hands, so I don't mind a little bit of crop, but it is what it is. Then just below that, we got our feedback section. So if you're having some issues, go ahead and send Google some feedback. And then we got our help section here with some nice tutorials in it if we tap on it, right? So you got some quick tutorials in here. And it will also help you fix some issues if you have any. And you can also send feedback from here as well. Okay? So this 
pretty much goes over the camera interface on the Pixel 3a XL. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and jump, uh, go ahead and cut in the photo samples, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut in the video samples, and we'll bring this video to a close. Now, as I always do with these camera reviews, this whole video will be time stamped for your convenience. So please feel free to check out the video description so you could jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about. All right, that does it for this section. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys on the other side. Peace everyone, we're out of here.
I hope y'all enjoyed those photo and video samples. And now we're going to get into the video coverage with the Pixel 3a XL. Now we're changing up the format a little bit here. We're going to do the vlog footage first and then the rear facing camera footage, but everything else will stay the same. So starting off here, we're testing out the front facing 8 megapixel camera on the 3a XL and this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS. Okay, so y'all let me know what you think of this. Also, there is no external mic hooked up here, so what you're seeing is coming directly out of the camera. So, built-in microphones and built-in front-facing camera. Let me know what y'all think. Now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and keep the video test going. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone, and so now we're back in and we're testing out the rear-facing 12 megapixel primary camera on the Pixel 3a XL and this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up and stabilization is turned on. Now these files coming out of the Pixel can get huge so let's not waste any time and jump straight into the testing and try to get this done as fast as possible because we got some very big video files here especially when we start shooting in 4k it's going to get outrageous let's get started so let's start off with the pans we're going to pan three times and we're going to pan from here all the way through to right there we're going to do this three times so that was one let's pan on back Okay, here we go with number two. That's number two. And let's go back. All right, and here we go with number three. Okay, let's bring it back to the center. That was number three. Oh, well, let me finish that. Boom. And bring it back to the center. Boom, that's number three. And now let's go straight into the exposure testing. So let's line up on the tree. And we're going to pan up and down from the tree. And when we test the exposure, we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as evenly and as quickly as possible. So let's see how the pixel cameras do. Lined up on the tree, let's pan down. All right. And let's pan up. That's one. And that was actually pretty good. It did blow out, but it recovered very quickly and evenly. Not bad. Here we go again. Number two. Down. Up. Boom, boom. Yeah, man. The Pixel cameras are really solid. You can pretty much, once you get the hang of them, you know exactly how they're going to perform. So that's two. Let's do one more. Down. Up. Really good stuff. Not bad when we talk about the exposure. Now, let me adjust my grip. And let's test the focus. So we're going to pick our three focal points. We got the big tree out there. We're going to use the pillar right here, and we're going to use the bushes over there, okay? And it has tap to focus as well as continuous autofocus. We're going to test them both, starting off with continuous autofocus. So here we go. Pillar, no, no. We're going to use the bushes to the left. What do y'all think of that? Let me know how the cameras perform in auto mode as well as tap to focus mode. So we're doing auto mode first, okay? Bushes, tree. Pillar, what do you think? Let's do it one more time. Bushes, tree, pillar. That actually looks pretty good. It's a little bit overexposed when we lock on the pillar, but that's pretty good. So that was the autofocus. Now let's do the tap to focus. So same three subjects, bushes, tap, all right, really fast focusing speeds. And I like how it auto focuses everything exposure, focus, everything. And you can lock the focus. 
you can lock the exposure and it does have object tracking so now that I tapped on the bushes it will stay locked on those bushes as long as it sees it in the frame try to keep those bushes in focus not bad not bad at all okay let's go over to the tree tap locked up really fast focusing speed here really fast indeed and then come over to the pillar tap locked up not bad not bad at all let's do it one more time bushes tap locked up tree tap locked up pillar tap locked up really fast really consistent not bad google not bad at all a little bit of overexposure but not bad all right so to round out this video now let's test out the zoom so this whole video so far has been done with no zoom let's go ahead and pick a focal subject let's pick those bushes way in the distance so let me lock on them all right we're going to lock the focus and we're going to lock the exposure let me adjust it to the proper boom that's perfect for the scene and now we're going to zoom in now with the google cameras you can set the volume rocker to zoom in and out or take a photo or start a video you can adjust that in the settings or you can use the pinch to zoom and what i like about the google camera interface it will keep your zoom up on the screen even after you set it and you also have a quick shortcut to punch in two times so you can see i can go from no zoom to punching in two times just with a single tap of the button and i can also do that from any zoom range so i could zoom in to 1.5 times and then i could punch in to two times and then punch back out to 1.5 times just that easy there right so i really do like that feature that's a really nice feature all right now this is 1.5 times zoom next let's go up to two times zoom two times zoom right there and honestly, I would say you really don't want to zoom in more than two times. So I like that. I like how they have that quick shortcut to two times zoom. But let's keep going. Let's go up to three times zoom now. So three up oh, three three point five three times zoom right here. All right. What do you think? Now it looks a little washed out, but the colors look good. The stabilization looks good. I'm not mad at it. Okay. Let's max it out now. So max is five times zoom. Check that out. Okay, now it did wash out the image somewhat and it did darken up the image somewhat and it got a little bit more shaky, but that still looks kind of usable even though I wouldn't recommend you zoom in that far, but five times zoom is the maximum. All right, let's zoom out now. Boom, and we're back out to no zoom. All right, so this has been a real quick camera test with the front and the rear facing cameras in 1080p on the Pixel 3a XL with no external microphone hooked up. Now let me run inside and we're going to redo similar tests indoors daytime low light. So I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So now we are back in. This time we're indoors and this is indoors daytime low light footage. Starting off here, this is a stationary vlog style clip here. So I just have the tripod set up with the phone on it. Flip to the front facing camera. So this is the 8 megapixel front facing camera on the Pixel 3a XL. And I do have the shades tinted. So this is indeed low light. And I got to tell y'all, based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, ooh, this is looking good. This is like mad usable right here. Mad usable indeed. Also, this is being recorded in 1080p 30fps, which is the maximum recording resolution for the front-facing camera. That's pretty much it. No more, no less. Okay, with no external microphone hooked up. So please let me know what you think of the overall video quality as well as the overall audio quality coming out of the cameras on the Pixel 3a XL. All right, so real quick front-facing vlog style clip here. Now let's spin the cameras around and do a similar test with the rear facing 12 megapixel primary cameras. So I will be right back. See y'all in a second. Peace. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the rear facing primary camera on the Pixel 3a XL. 
This is being recorded indoors, daytime, low light, in 1080p, 30 FPS, with no external microphone hooked up. So let me do some verifications, and then we're going to get straight into the testing. So if I pan over this way, y'all can see that this is indoors, daytime, low light. And the only lighting source we have lighting up the scene here today is the light coming in through the shades that are cracked. Other than that, you can see the room is completely dark. No other light is on, okay? As we always do for the indoor daytime low light testing. All right, so let's pan back over. All right, and now let's pan the camera down and angle this up in the traditional reviewer style angle here so we can start the testing. Yeah, okay, so that looks straight. Right there, that looks straight. And then let's pan it down, let's go. So. And we'll do the drop like that. Boom, that's it. And there you have it. Now, y'all can see there's a bit of a problem here, right? Now, this is looking extra cropped in. And that's because I do believe when Google records video for their stabilization, they crop in the sensor. When you use EIS, that, that's basically just digitally cropping the sensor when you use EIS. Okay, so to alleviate that, I would actually have to raise up everything a little bit to get that wider angle. So now it's in the proper position, but it's too close. So now let's raise it up. Boom, that looks good. And let's tighten it back up. So now it's raised up real nice. And then what I would need to do from here is back up just a little bit. Boom. And there we have it, right there. Now this is the typical angle that I would usually use when I'm recording my my reviews. Now it would actually be in a little bit closer because of that crop on the sensor. However, we gotta back it up and drop it down just a little bit. But this is it. This is the traditional reviewer style angle. And you can see, I gotta like position this over. It's still kinda cropped, but it barely fits my whole keyboard in the frame, okay? Now, this is one of the reasons why I like wide angle sensors, because then I wouldn't have to do as much to get my subject in the frame, but how did this, look, but how does this look, y'all? Let me know down below. Now, let me hold it up, give y'all a close up. How does that text look? How sharp is that? How legible is that? All right, let me know. All right, all right, now let's do some focus testing here. All right, so let me grab something to do some focus testing with. Uh, ah, S7 Active right here, we can do this. So now we got the S7, the S7 Active in here and that looks awesome, y'all. That looks really awesome. This footage is like mad usable, yo. And if we get a close up, Check out how legible that is. Wow, I can read all of that. And look at the textured gradient uh, stepple pattern that comes off on the S7 Active here. That looks awesome, yo. All right, now let's do a quick focusing test. Look at that shallow depth of feel. So you see how the keyboard's blurred out, but the phone is in focus. Let's take the phone out. Bam, instantly locked on the keyboard. Wow, that was good stuff. Let's bring the phone back in. Boom, and we're back on the phone, right? Take it out, bam, back on the keyboard. It's almost instant. There's little to no pulse. There's little to no stutter. It's instant. I think Google has finally gotten their video down. This is looking real good, all right? So that pretty much does it for this indoor daytime low light test with the front and the rear facing cameras on the Pixel 3a XL. Once again, this was in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think. Now what I'm gonna do is a little bit later on, we're gonna come back and we're gonna redo similar testing with the front and the rear facing cameras in nighttime artificial lighting. And then later on in the video, y'all gonna see something similar with 1080p with the primary cameras, and then you're gonna see something similar with 4K with the primary cameras. So I'll be right back with the rest of the testing for you guys and gals. I'll see you in a little bit. 
Peace. All right, everyone. And now we are back in. And once again, we're testing out the cameras on the Pixel 3a XL. So this camera test is being done in nighttime artificial lighting here. And it will be done with the front and the rear facing cameras in 1080p at 30 FPS. So starting off the testing here, we're testing out the front facing 8 megapixel camera on the Pixel 3a XL. This is being recorded with no external microphone hooked up and at 1080p, 30 FPS. So we just got some nice stationary front facing footage here. Let me know what y'all think, okay? And based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, it's kind of a little overexposed. Like it's making my shirt extra white and it's kind of slightly overexposing the background behind me, all right? But the neat thing about the pixels is we can dial it in. So we can lock focus on my face. Boom. And then we could dial in the proper exposure. So we can overexpose. Or we can underexpose till it's properly lit. So right about there is perfect. And now you can see the lighting is perfect. My The color of my shirt is exposed properly. The color of my face is slightly darkened. But overall, I would say this image is a lot better now with the focus locked and the exposure adjusted. Alright, so let me know what y'all think of the audio, the video quality, so on and so forth down below. Y'all know how the feedback goes. Leave all your feedback down below in the comments. It is greatly appreciated. Now, let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and test out the primary 12 megapixel camera in the same lighting scenario. So I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone, and now we are back, and we're testing out the rear-facing 12-megapixel camera on the 3A XL in 1080p, 30 FPS, low-light, artificial lighting testing here with no external microphone hooked up. So let's do some quick verifications, and then let's angle everything up in a traditional reviewer-style approach. So if I pan over to the right here, you can in see, you can indeed, not in see, you can indeed see that it is nighttime outside and there is no light coming in through the window here. So it's pitch black out there, as you can see, and the only light we have is my overhead smart light here, which gives me the ability to change the color to anything that I want. So I could say, okay, Google, <clears throat> set my bedroom lights to green or something like that, okay. and it would do it. You'll have to unlock your device. Okay, but see, it's prompting me for security first. I don't know if y'all heard that, but it'll work. I could change it to whatever color I want, but just for verification purposes, y'all can see that there is no external light coming in through the window. It's all the overhead room artificial light tonight, okay? So, just wanted to show y'all that. Now let's center this up. Boom. And let's angle it down. Let me tighten this back up first so it doesn't swivel. And now let's go ahead and angle this down. Let me hold on to this so it doesn't whop all over the place. And there we have it. Now let me back up a little bit. And let me angle it back up slightly. Boom. That's perfect. Actually, I could pull this out some more. And then angle this down some more. And then back it up a little bit more. Boom. That that right there is perfect. It's straight on. Got that nice downward angle. We're good to go. So check out how the Pixel 3a XL's cameras do in this low light artificial lighting scenario here. I have to tell y'all, based on what I see through the viewfinder, this looks great. This looks really great. And if the earlier performance is any indication... The audio should be really great as well. Man, once again, I have to say, Google seems to have done a great job with not only their photo camera performance, which was second to none since they came out with their first Pixel, but now they seem to have really improved their overall video performance. So, they kind of are offering a really good overall camera performance experience at a phenomenally good price. And it only gets better as the software updates continue to roll out. Alright, but let me know what y'all think of this. 
check out the detail on my keyboard here. How is that looking? Is that legible? Is it crisp? Is it sharp? Let me know down below. Check that out. Check that out. Let's get focused on the logo there. Boom, looking good. All right. Now, once again, as we did earlier, let me center this back up. We're also going to bring in a subject so we can use it to test the focus. All right. Got my Samsung Galaxy S7 active here. And we're going to use this to test the focus. So let's bring it in. Look how quick that focus locked. Nice and crisp. Even if I get super close. Got that nice blurred out background there. Y'all see that? Look at that nice blurred out background. Look at the textures and the pattern. Being able to get picked up off of the S7 active rear. And then if we get super up close to the text down there, man, that's looking super legible right there. Check that out. All right, really good stuff in terms of the focus. Now let's take it out and lock back up on the keyboard. Let's see how long it takes. Boom, and we're right back to the keyboard. Like, it's nothing. Google, like, it's nothing, yo. Like, for real, it was like, they had this, the photo camera performance locked down so good. If anybody came out with a camera and they touted how good their photo performance was, Google was like, oh, for real? Hey, y'all hold my beer real quick. Snap, snap. Can, can they take it that good? And had people going like, nah, they, they can't take it that good. Google, calm down. But Google's Achilles heel was always their video performance. And slowly but surely... They are getting better with that video performance, at least based on what I'm seeing. So let's do one more focus test, and let's wrap this up. So let's bring the phone back in. Bam! Look how quick that locked in, man. Again, look at that nice, shallow, blurred-out background. Look at how crisp the phone is looking in focus. And the focusing speed was almost instant, man. It's crazy. Then we can get in super close. Without losing any detail. Check that out. And then just as quickly, we could take it out. Bam! Right back on the keyboard. Like, it's nothing. It's nothing. I like that. That's crazy good, man. Whew! Alright, Google. Alright, so this officially brings to a close the 1080p camera testing. And the testing with the front and rear facing cameras on the Pixel 3a XL. Now what I'm gonna be doing is moving forward with the camera test, we're gonna be testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera in 1080p, 60 FPS, and 4K, 30 FPS, all right? So the next set of clips you're gonna see, we're gonna be outside in shooting space number two, testing out the 1080p, 60 FPS camera performance, and then we're gonna wrap up the footage testing out the 4K camera performance out in the big yard. All right, so I hope y'all enjoy these next set of clips, and I'll see y'all in a second. Peace. All right, y'all, so now we are back in, and now we're testing out the rear-facing cameras on the Pixel 3a XL in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphones hooked up. So starting off here, we're out in shooting space number two. We're out here by the pool today. It's a little bit of a overcast day, so it's not gonna it's not gonna be as bright as it was when we did the first set of samples. But you know, I'm not feeling too good today. It's kind of been a bad day, but making content always makes me feel better. So I feel like I felt like not feel like I felt like why not just get it in? I know I'll feel better after I make it. So starting off here, we got a vlog style test with the primary 12 megapixel camera. And once again, this is in 1080p at 60 FPS. So nice stationary video footage here. Let me know what y'all think. Now, I do not know what the viewfinder looks like. I'll have to see what it looks like in post. But I did set up the shutter button to start and stop video. That's how I was able to start and stop this video. So, real quick vlog style test. Now let's spin the cameras around and test it out in a more traditional fashion and do some more testing. I will be right back with y'all. I'll see you in a minute.
All right, everyone. So here we are. All I've done is spun the cameras around. And now let's get into the regular traditional testing that we always do. All right. So starting off here, we're going to do our traditional three pans. So we're going to pan all the way from here. And y'all going to have to forgive the mess in the tools. All the way through to right about there. And back, we're going to do this three times. And once again, this is in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And we are using the rear-facing 12 megapixel primary camera on the Pixel 3a XL. And stabilization is turned on. So let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality, the overall audio quality, the overall stabilization. Y'all know all the good stuff. Let me know down below. All your feedback is greatly appreciated. All right, that's two. And here we go with number three. All right, and that's number three. Coming on back, coming on back. All right. Now let's center up. And let's go directly into an exposure test. So we're going to use the pool heater as a focal point, and we're going to pan up and down from there. Now, when we test out the exposure, we want a nice even transition transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas of the scenes with minimal to no exposure blowout. Ideally, there would be none. It would just be a nice smooth transition. But if it does blow out, we want it to recover as evenly and as quickly as possible. So let's do this that let's do this now. We're gonna do this three times. Here we go. So now we're up on the pool heater and we're gonna pan down to the pool deck. Alright. Who broke something and left it by the pool? I gotta pick that up when we're done. So down and coming back up. That's one. Going down. And coming back up. That's two. And last time, down. And come back up. That's three. So nice, even, smooth transition. Little to no blowout, but I think that's because it was an overcast day. So if there was more sun, it probably would have blown out a little bit more. But for what it is, it did really good. Now, I did notice that as with a lot of other cameras that I tested, it kind of wants to change the color of the pool deck here. So if I go all the way down, you can see it's trying to make it a light brown, a light whitish color, but the realistic color is right here. It's like an off eggshell brown, and then the rim of the pool is actually white. So if I'm gonna get the accurate colors, I would have to hold it right about here. But if I go further down, it tries to make it more whitish. All right, at least that's what I'm seeing from the viewfinder. I don't know how it's going to look after post and after processing, but it is what it is. All in all, I feel like it did a really great job with the exposure. Now, let's get into the focus testing. Now, starting off here, we're going to use the autofocus, and then we're going to switch to tap to focus. So we're going to pick three focal subjects here. We're going to use this pool chair as number one. I'm going to use that mango tree in the distance as number two. Okay. And then we're going to use this pool chair all the way over here as number three. All right. So I'm going to cycle through them three times. And I want y'all to let me know how you feel the autofocus is doing on the Pixel 3a XL. Here we go. So folding chair off to my left. Pool chair. Okay. And then mango tree. Look at them blossoms, yo kind of burnt but it looks good all right that's number one let's do this one more time again folding chair off to my right okay pool chair and then mango tree and that's number two all right let me switch up my grip now and let's do tap to focus on the same three subjects so folding chair off to my right tap Locked up. That was almost instant. That was pretty good. Pool chair over here. Tap. Locked up. Again, almost instant. That was pretty good. Now, it did overexpose and blow out the sky a little bit, but for our focal subject, it did a great job with focus. And now, mango tree. Tap. 
locked up and you can see it did a, a blow out the exposure a little bit there as well but the mango tree itself is nice and in focus so not bad not bad at all let's do it one more time pool chair tap locked up okay i mean folding chair my mistake y'all y'all know what i'm saying folding chair tap locked up okay pool chair right here tap locked up and then mango tree over there tap locked up so really fast focus really good overall detail retention because this is like almost bang on with the scene there's a little bit of overexposure but it's not bad not bad at all so y'all let me know what y'all think of that tap to focus right there and the uh, auto focus in general now let's finish out the test with a zoom test so we're going to use the roof of the house in the distance there we're gonna lock the focus. We're gonna lock the exposure. Let's let's dial in the exposure properly here. So we're gonna dial it in uh, right about here. Let's lock the focus, let's lock the exposure. Boom, that looks perfect. So this is with no zoom. And as I said in the earlier video, I could jump to two times zoom just by tapping the shortcut button on the screen. So this is no zoom. And then this is two times zoom right there. Boom. Check that out. And then from two times zoom, we could use pinch to zoom after that. So 2.5 right here. Okay. And then three times right there. Boom. And it's funny because when we were, when we were recording in 1080p, 30 FPS, we could zoom in up to five times. But now that we're in 1080p, 60 FPS, we can only zoom in up to three times. So it's kind of weird. I don't know why it did it like that, but that's how it does it. Okay, so the max you zoom when you have uh, 1080p 60 is three times. Even though I wouldn't recommend that, I would say if you want to zoom in, just zoom into two times right here. Two times still looks really good. But... This zoom test is just so we could test everything overall. So we could test the focus, the detail retention, the stabilization, all that good stuff in one final cumulative test. So y'all let me know how the Pixel 3a cameras did on this test. Now, let's run inside and do some more testing, all right? I'll be right back with y'all. Let's zoom out first. Boom, and now we're back out. All right, I'll be right back. See y'all in a second. Peace. All right, in one... And now, we are testing out the primary 12 megapixel cameras on the Google Pixel 3a XL in 1080p at 60fps with no external microphone hooked up. And we're doing this indoors, daytime, low light right now. Okay? So, starting off here, we got some vlog style stationary footage. So y'all let me know how the overall video looks how the audio sounds, there is no external microphone hooked up. Let me know all that good stuff down below. And once again, because we're doing with, doing this with the primary cameras, I have no idea what this footage is gonna look like until I see it back in post. So, hopefully it looks good. Now, this is, the, this is a little bit more of a challenging situation because it's indoor, daytime, low light. And it is rainy and overcast today, so we really don't have that much um, external light to work with coming in through the window. So this really is going to be a hard test for the primary cameras on the Pixel 3a XL. But y'all let me know how you feel it performs. Now, let me spin the cameras around and we're going to use the uh, Pixel 3a XL in a traditional reviewer style setup. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. Peace. All right, here we go, everyone. So I switched out tripods and we spun the camera around and we have everything set up in a traditional reviewer style angle approach. And once again, this is testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Pixel 3a XL in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So, let me do some verification, and we're going to jump right into the testing after that. So, if we pan over here, 
you can see that the only thing we have lighting up the scene here today is the external light coming in through the window here. No other light is lighting up the scene. You can see if I pan further over, it's actually super dark. My room light isn't on. No other external lights is on. The only thing lighting up the scene here is the light coming in through the window. So this is indeed indoors daytime low light testing. I just wanted to verify that for everyone. Now let me pan this back over. And let's straighten this up. Okay. Let me tighten it back up now so it doesn't wiggle back around. And then we're going to pan it down and put it into the traditional reviewer style angle here. So let's pan this down now. Whoops. And would you look at that. Did I get it right on my first try? Bang. Yeah, that's, that's almost straight. That's pretty much perfect. All right. So yeah. This is what the traditional reviewer style angle would look like on the Pixel 3a XL. And once again, this is indoors, daytime, low light. Okay. And again, this is extreme daytime low light because it's an overcast and rainy day. So the cameras really have to struggle to identify the scene and reproduce it to the best of their abilities. Now... I can help the cameras out a little bit by turning on my studio lights. So you can see if I pick up my Moto G Power here and we go into my Casa, Cam uh, Casa Light application and I need to add more light on the scene, we can turn on my room lights and you see how much better the lighting is with my overhead studio light turned on. Okay? So if it was ever too dark or I didn't like the natural light coming into the scene, we can always turn on those overhead studio lights, and now we got enough light to make it do what it do. But we are testing indoors, daytime, low light, so we're using external light only here to see how the cameras perform. So let me cut those lights off, and let's continue on with the testing. So first things first, how is the, how, how is, how are the cameras doing? Picking up the detail from my keyboard in this lower light scenario. How's the focus? How's the detail uh, retention? Let me know. How sharp is that text? Okay. Let me know. Once again, let's get a close up on the logo. What y'all think? What y'all think? Okay. Real quick test there. And then once again, I got one of my favorite smartphones of all time here. And we're going to do some focus testing. So we got the Samsung Galaxy S7 active here. And let's bring it into the frame. How quick was that focus? That actually looks really good through the viewfinder right here. Now it's not picking up the textures as good because we ain't got as much light to work with. But it does still look like it has some decent focus. How's the sharpness of the text right there? Let me know. Let me know. Okay, now let's take it out and see how quick it relocks on the keyboard. Boom. A little bit of an extra second there. But still relatively fast, especially in this lower light scenario. Let's bring it back in. Boom. Okay, definitely struggling to get the details and the textures without as much light. All right. But what do y'all think? How did it do? One more time. And it relocks on the keyboard really, really quick. Now I just want to show y'all something for comparison's sake. Let's turn back on the studio lights. All right. And now you have a really nice combination of natural daylight coming in through the window and the studio lights. And let's see the differences in focusing speeds. Check out the detail on the keyboard now with a nice balanced combination of the light. And now let's check out the focusing speeds here. So bringing the phone back in, bam, look at that. Look at that. And again, check out that shallow depth of field in the background. Check out the texture that it's able to pick up. And now let's take it out. Boom, instantly locks back on the keyboard. Just so y'all can see the difference there. I turned the studio lights on. Let's turn the studio lights back off. Boom. All right. But this has been an indoor daytime low light test 
testing out the primary cameras on the Google Pixel 3a XL in 1080p at 60 FPS. All right, so y'all let me know what you think. How did the cameras perform? Now, in my opinion, based on what I saw through the viewfinder, they look like they did a great job. But y'all let me know your feedback down below. That being said, um, now a little bit later on here, I'm going to give you guys a similar set of tests. Testing these cameras out in nighttime artificial lighting settings here. All right, so I'll be right back with the next set of tests for everyone. See y'all in a little bit. Peace. Alright everyone. And now we are back in. Still testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel 3a XL. This is another 1080p 60fps uh, clip. And this is also being recorded with no external microphone hooked up. So please, as always, let me know what you think of the overall video quality as well as the overall audio quality down below. Okay? Now this is a real quick vlog style clip with the rear facing primary cameras. Real quick stationary vlog style clip. So let me know what y'all think of this clip which is done indoors nighttime using artificial lighting all right so hopefully this clip looks good because everything is running in auto mode so if it's underexposed or overexposed i won't be able to tell until after i see the footage but please let me know what y'all think that being said now let's now spin the cameras around and give y'all a traditional reviewer style camera test so I will be right back with that clip. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone, and now we are back in. All I did, all I've done, is spin the cameras around, switch out tripods, and now we're recording a traditional reviewer-style test clip for y'all indoors, nighttime, using artificial lighting. Once again, this is the primary 12-megapixel camera on the Pixel 3a XL with no external microphone hooked up. So let's do some quick verifications and let's jump directly into the testing after that. Let's go. So if we pan to the side here, y'all can indeed see that there is no external daylight coming in through the window. So y'all can see it's pitch black out here. So the only light we have lighting up the scene here this evening is my overhead artificial studio room lighting. All right, and even still, y'all gonna have to forgive the mess here. If I pan further over, y'all can see even my bedroom lamps are turned off. All right, so the only light that we have lighting up the scene is my overhead artificial studio room lighting. All right, so let's now position this back over, center it up. Okay, let me tighten back up my rotating head. So it doesn't rotate out by accident. And now let's position this and swivel this down into a traditional reviewer style angle. Let's go. So that looks straight. Now let's pan it down. Here we go. Boom. And there it is. Now that looks almost perfect. Boom. Yep. Yep. And now here's an example of what the... Uh, Pixel 3a XL cameras look like in a traditional reviewer style angle mode. All right, so check out the detail coming off of my keyboard here. Let me know what y'all think. How do you feel these cameras are performing in this low light artificial lighting scenario? Leave your feedback down below. Now, let me hold up my keyboard for y'all here. How you think it's doing with the texture on the keys? How legible is that? How readable is that? Legible, readable, same thing. Let me know. Let's pan through. Let's get a close-up shot of the logo. How y'all feel it's doing right now? How do you feel it's doing? Okay. Put this down. Alright. And now... 
Let me bring in my focal subject so we can test the focusing speeds. Oh, it's kind of dirty. Let me clean this off. Where's that microfiber cleaning cloth at? I can't believe I didn't see how dirty it was from the last clips. I ain't been paying too much attention. All right. All right, there we go. So, focal subject, Samsung Galaxy S7 Active. Check out that focus. Check out that detail. Look at that nice blurry background it creates. And you can see when we tilt it into the light proper, we pick up all the textures from the back of the device. And man, that's looking pretty good. And if we take a close up of the text here, How's that looking? Is that legible? Is that readable? Legible, readable, same thing. How's that looking? Let's get a nice tight close up. Tilt. Oh yeah, that's definitely looking readable there. All right. All right. AT&T tramp stamp right there. Ooh. All right. Now let's check the focusing speeds. So let's take the phone out. See how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Boom. And we right back on the keyboard like it's nothing. Let's bring the phone back in. Boom. And we right back to the phone like it's nothing. So I have to say this. One more time. Boom. Right back to the keyboard. One more time. Boom. Right back to the phone. Boom. Right back to the keyboard. Gotta say this. It looks like Google has really done a great job in their overall video performance. And this is coming from somebody that's tested um, pretty much every Pixel I can get my hands on. So we've tested the Pixel XL first generation, the Pixel uh, 2XL, and now we're testing the 3A XL. And we probably will get our hands on a uh, 3 XL sometime down the few sometime down the line and even a 4 XL if we can so I do plan on testing and reviewing all of the pixels but from what I've seen from first generation to second generation to third generation whereas the first and second generations focused heavily on photo performance the third generation is offering the overall full camera package with uh, really good photo performance, top-notch photo performance, and really good video performance. Google knocking it out the park right now. So anyways, this has been a real quick indoor nighttime artificial lighting testing with the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel 3a XL in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So now what we're gonna do is a little bit later on tomorrow, we're gonna run out to the big yard and I'm gonna wrap up the video testing with the 4K 30 FPS camera clips. So I'll be right back. We're gonna jump straight into those clips. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, peace. All right, everyone. And now we are back in and here we are in the big yard here today testing out the 12 megapixel primary cameras on the Google Pixel 3a XL. These last set of video clips are being recorded in 4K at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So starting off here, we just got a real quick vlog style clip here. Let me know how the overall audio is. Let me know how the overall video is. Let me also know how the overall stabilization is down below. Y'all know how it goes. All feedback is greatly appreciated, all right? Now let's spin the camera around and give y'all one last traditional outdoor test. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone, so now I've spun the cameras around and as you can see, we are indeed out here in the big yard. And now let's get into the final set of 4K camera testing for the Pixel 3a XL, okay? So this is being recorded at 4K, 30 FPS, with no external microphone hooked up. 
So let me know what y'all think of the overall stabilization, the overall audio, and the overall video quality on the whole down below. All right. Now let's dive straight into the testing here. So starting off, we're going to get into our usual pans here. So we're going to pan from here all the way through to right about there and come on back. We're going to do this three times. So that was one. Here we go with number two. And here we go with number three. And that's three right there. Bring it back to the center. Now we're going to go ahead and jump into the exposure testing. Now it's extremely sunny out here today. So I expect the exposure testing to be really good. So we're going to use that big tree as our focal point. And we're going to pan down, up and down to the grass three times and see how the cameras perform. Now, because it's so nice out here today, I'm expecting it to perform perfectly, but we'll see. What we're looking for here when we test the exposure is we want a nice smooth transition from the darker areas of the scene to the lighter areas of the scene with minimal to no exposure blowout. And if the camera does blow out, we want it to recover as quickly and as evenly as possible. So let's see what happens. So right now we're on the tree and we're going down to the grass here. Okay, and we're going back up to the tree. How is that? Now, I am standing in direct sunlight, so I can barely see it. So I won't actually know what's going on until I see the video in post. But y'all let me know how y'all think the cameras did down below in the comments. So that was one. Let's do two more. Here we go with number two. All right, that's two. And last one. Okay, and that was number three. Now let's get into testing out that focus. Let's go. So we're going to use three focal subjects. We're going to use the tree here right in front. We're going to use this trailer off to my left. And we're going to use the blue Jetta off to my right. Now we're going to start off testing out the continuous autofocus. Then we're going to go directly into testing out the tap to focus. All right. So starting off going to my left, we should be lined up on the trailer. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Okay. Going over to the tree in the middle. How does that look? It, it looks like it might be in focus, at least from my eye. And then going over to the blue Jetta here. That's one. Let's do this two times. So that was one. Going to do it one more time. So coming over to the trailer to my left. Okay. Tree in the middle. Jetta off to the right. Boom. Okay. What do y'all think? Now let me readjust my grip. And we'll do the same thing with tap to focus here. So trailer off to my left tap locked up almost instant there okay tree in the center tap locked up a little bit of it an exposure adjustment but really quick overall focus there and that is looking real good real good indeed jetta off to my right tap locked up now that one is definitely a lot more overexposed because there's a little bit of a shadow over there so it really had to dial in that exposure to try and catch it and it still didn't catch the back of the car all the way from what i could see in the viewfinder but really quick overall focus what do y'all think let's do it one more time so coming over to the trailer to my left tap locked up that was really fast okay tree in the center tap locked up again really fast overall focus okay last time jetta off to the right tap 
locked up. Good stuff, good stuff indeed. All right? So, real quick focusing test there. Now, let's get into the zoom testing. So, I don't know if you can see, but there's a um, an electric pole all the way down there in the distance there. We're going to use that as our focal point. So, we're going to lock the focus on it. Boom. We're going to lock the exposure on it. Let me dial that in. Boom. And then we're going to zoom in. Okay. And one of the reasons why I like testing zoom is because it tests everything in terms of camera performance. So it tests the stabilization. It tests the detail retention. Okay. And it also tests the overall zoom capabilities. All right. So beautiful stuff indeed when we talk about testing the zoom. So right now, this whole video so far has been done with no zoom. Let's take it up to two times zoom now. So simple tap on the shortcut. Two times zoom. We in here. Okay. Now let's keep it going. Let's go up to 2.5 times zoom now. So 2.5 times zoom. All right. Let's keep it going even further. Let's go up to 3.5 times zoom. Oh, that's 3.7. My bad. That's 3.4. 3.5 right there. 3.5 times zoom. Alright? How's it looking? How's the detail? How's the stabilization? How's the overall video quality? Let me know down below. Alright? And it's funny because now we can actually go further than 3 times zoom. So it's like when we record in 1080p, we can go up to 5 times zoom if we do 1080p 30. If we do 1080p 60, we can only really go up to 3 times zoom, but it looks like if we're recording in 4K, we can max that bad boy out. Alright? So now let's keep going here. So let's max it out. So now we're maxed out at 5 times zoom. How does that look? Now, I gotta tell y'all, honestly, looking at the viewfinder, it looks a little grainy, but the colors look decent. They look really decent. Alright, but in all honesty, if I was making a recommendation for zoom, you really don't want to go any further than two times zoom right here. This is it. Or at most, I could say with the pixel cameras, we can go up to 2.5 right here. Other than that, if you want to get a zoom shot, you need to zoom into this point and you need to physically get as close to your subject as possible. Okay, but that pretty much does it for this testing. So let's go ahead and zoom out now. And y'all, once again, let me know how you feel these cameras perform on the Pixel 3a XL. Now, my closing thoughts here. I use these cameras to do a lot so far. Um, I'm making this video way ahead of time, but in all honesty, I've had this bad boy for roughly about a week. And I put this device through the ringer. And my overall final thoughts with the cameras after literally testing everything. Indoor, daytime, uh, low light, indoor, uh, nighttime, low light, uh, portraits, um, super low light, daytime, outside, good light. I've tested pretty much every scenario with this. Okay? Even nighttime, no light whatsoever. So like the astrophotography, no, no light at all? Yeah. I'm not going to feature those clips though because I don't like how those came out. But for your general usage purposes, I have to say the Pixel 3a cameras are phenomenal. Photo performance has been second to none. Okay? Video performance is really, really good. And audio capture capabilities, yeah boy forget about it and even better still if you're in an environment where you can't get the best audio you got that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the camera software automatically picks up external microphones as soon as you plug them in so at least to me when we talk about the ease of use and the best overall user experience I have to say the pixel cameras and the overall pixel camera software is almost second to none. If I had to rank it, it would have to be Pixels are number one, then Samsung is number two, 
then Motorola is number three, then we got Nokia at number four, then we got Huawei coming in at number five, so on, so forth. All right, but that's just my overall opinion. Anyways, this has been my overall camera test, including the photo and the video samples for the Google Pixel 2, Pixel 2, the Google Pixel 3a XL. All right, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video. I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. If you did, y'all know what to do. That being said, I hope everyone is staying safe out there, and I will catch everyone in my next video. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Can I get the piece up there? Peace.